Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's Shala here and today we are making this sweet little uh, baby card for a coworker of mine and this is also part of the Scrap and Stamp blog so head on over there for all the materials. Uh, we're going to start off with this loads of fun stamp set from Lawn Fawn. I love it. These are some great sentiments on here and some great images. And it's so very versatile. And today I wanted to use it to create a unique shaker card. Um, like I said, a co-worker of mine just announced that she is expecting. And I am so excited for her. So I'm going to start off by uh, using the uh, washing machine image and some of these little clothes images that we have here. The laundry basket. Um, and some of these little socks and what I plan on doing is cutting the center circle out of that washing machine and using these little tiny clothing elements as the shaker elements as well as uh, of course some of the uh, sequins and and what have you to make it look like bubbles. So I just start out by laying out these images onto some Nina Classic Crest uh, solar weight cardstock. It's the I think it's the 90 pound that I'm using on here. Uh, I use this one because I like the way um, it works with Copic coloring and that's what I plan on doing today. So once I get my little images laid out in my stamp perfect I'm going to head and close the door there and I will uh, use my Memento Black Tuxedo ink to stamp that. Uh, that's my favorite ink for when I'm doing Copic coloring. It seems to dry quickly and uh, it doesn't smudge with the Copic markers. So just go ahead and ink up my images here and then I can close the lid down, give it a little push and look at that, some great images. I'm going to actually stamp this again just to make sure that I get a nice crisp image for these. And then I can go ahead and remove that and I will color it up in a bit. Now I didn't have the sentiment that I wanted to use. A little bundle is on the way and I didn't have the the uh, pattern paper that I wanted so I just used my Silhouette Studio uh, software and I created this uh, kind of card base image and out of uh, the uh, background images that you can use through Silhouette uh, and I just kind of created this background with with the pattern paper that I wanted. Now you can use the pattern paper if you have it, if what you like. Um, this was just a really simple way for me to create the look I wanted without actually having the materials that I needed. So I was able to choose the different fonts that I wanted and print it out and then I'll just trim this panel down to fit on a standard A2 size card. And then I also wanted a little image, uh, some pattern paper to look like there was a rug underneath or the flooring. So again, I didn't have the color of pattern paper that I wanted so I just created created it myself with my Silhouette Studio. If you have WordPerfect or any other software you can do the same thing. You can create your own fonts, print them out. Um, it's a great way to um, you know change the look of some of the stamps that you have even if you don't have the sentiments that you want. Now I did have the loads of fun sentiment in the stamp set that I have here for loads of fun so I can go ahead and use that and stamp it on my uh, little piece here once I get it all lined out. And uh, yeah, this is just its kind of a fun way. If, if you have a sentiment that you want to use and you don't have the stamp, go ahead and print it out on your computer. Um, I think that's, that's fine and it works really well. For this sentiment, I want to stamp this with my VersaClair Nocturne because as you all know, that is my favorite sentiment ink to use. Um, it does stay wet a little bit longer um, but that's okay. I did use my uh, powder tool there because I wasn't sure if the ink from my printer um, was going to still be a little bit wet and I originally was going to heat emboss this and then I changed my mind at the last minute and just decided to keep it stamped as is. Alright so now that I have that stamped out. I'm going to bring in my Fiskars trimmer here and just trim it down a little bit more so that it fits on my card panel a little better. And then I am going to kind of move on to the whole shaker portion of it. Uh, I have the images all colored and like in a snap here I got them all fussy cut out and then I'm going to go ahead and start building up this shaker card. 
So I'm just laying this out to make it look like that washing machine is sitting on that kind of gingham flooring look there. And I have my Lawn Fawn stitched circle dies and I'm going to use that. It fits perfectly inside this washing machine. I don't have the coordinating dies for this set so that's why I fussy cut everything out. Um, and I'm just going to use some washi tape just to hold it on. And I'm going to actually run this washing machine piece and that a card panel through my Gemini Junior at the same time. And the reason why I'm doing that is to make sure that I get um, the impression, I don't think it's going to cut through both pieces, so I, I wanted to make sure that I had an idea of where that circle exactly needed to be with that washing machine to line up. So I'm just going to use my uh, Gemini Junior here and I get together my uh, sandwich pieces and uh, I noticed that my magnetic piece was a bit uh, wrinkled. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I'll have to replace that piece eventually, but uh, for now it'll still work. It'll be fine. So I go ahead and run that through and then you can see here that it didn't cut through both pieces, but again that's that's completely okay. Um, I'm going to use my metal shim here and just run it through one more time and then hopefully that will will work to cut out those pieces. All right, what do we have here? I'm gonna remove the middle shim and I'm taking a look and it didn't cut through, but it made enough of a, an impression on there. You can see the impression on that uh, card panel piece in the back, carefully removing that washi tape off my colored image. Um, that I can just line it back up perfectly. It just kind of nestles in there nicely. There's enough of a groove for that a die cut to kind of just nestle in there. And then I just simply put it back into my sandwich pieces here for my Gemini Junior and run it through again. So that worked out well for me. And just like that, it is all cut up nicely. Now I want to adhere all these pieces down, but before I do that, um, I changed up the shaker piece. I'm not using acetate this time. Um, I did a Jennifer McGuire trick and I tried the heat embossing in uh, laminator paper. And it worked out really well. I was actually using this technique on some Christmas cards that I'm making. And I saw the piece, um, one of the pieces that I had, and I thought this would look really, really cool as like the bubbles from the washing machine. So this is just um, sparkle embossing powder and a little bit of glitter. And I just put it into the laminator sheet, ran it through my laminator, and this is what came out. And I think that looks really cool. It's gonna look like the bubbles and suds um, of the washing machine. So I'm gonna use one of these pieces. Um, I'm also using it for snow, the look of snow on some of my Christmas cards. So I just thought that was a fun and different um, look instead of just using the clear acetate for this shaker card. So I'm gonna trim that piece down and uh, what I want to do here is just quickly adhere this kind of flooring or carpet piece down and get it all lined up. And I apologize now for my hair. I didn't, um, didn't expect my head to be in the way and on camera as much. And I, I actually, um, yeah, I didn't brush my hair yet today. So I apologize for that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this um, strong Be Creative uh, Sookwing tape. Uh, that is a nice strong adhesive. I know that it's not going to lift off my card and I'll use that to adhere down that um, the uh, what do I call this piece? It's not really vellum. What is it? It's the um, laminator sheet. Sorry words were hard there for a second. So just making sure that it's uh, going to fit behind that little washing machine image using my craft pick here to remove that backing of the um, Be Creative tape. I'm sorry I have a big old ugly band-aid there as well. I took a nasty, nasty fall on Friday on my way to work. Um, it had snowed and then it had really melted and it was super slippery and icy and I bit it hard on the ground. Like I was covered in mud and blood and it was, I was quite a scene, but um, so yeah, that's why I have that big old ugly band-aid in the way. I'm sorry about that. All right, so once I get that uh, laminator sheet trimmed down, you can see how that looks. It kind of looks like suds or bubbles in there, and I think that's gonna be so much fun. I really like the look of that. I'll try and show you here on some darker cardstock if you can see it. Nice and sparkly and bubbly. It's so much fun. 
I really recommend that you guys give that a try if you have a laminator. I just got a really cheap one off of Amazon. You don't need anything really special. Um, so, you know, you don't, don't have to spend a lot of money on a laminator, but it really kind of ups your card game for sure. All right, so once I get that all sorted out, I want to, again, use my Be Creative tape to adhere that down just so it doesn't lift off. Just trim up the pieces. And this card really came together rather quickly in the grand scheme of things. I think the most amount of time was really um, just kind of coloring some of the images in and then fussy cutting them out. But if you have the coordinating dies, it'll go like a lot faster for sure. All right, so I've got that and I was about to adhere this down and then I realized I want to use um, some uh, foam on the back. I was going to use some foam tape and I didn't have enough so I'm just using this craft foam sheet that I have. And you can get this at the dollar store or the kids craft section of your craft store. Um, I really wanted to make sure that this was going to be a solid base for this card so that's why I'm using this uh, foam piece here. I think it'll be really nice on the card. And I'm just going to use my Fiskars trimmer to trim that down to the A2 size. I want it just a smidge smaller than an A2 size, um, just so that it doesn't hang off underneath the, the card panel that I created. And then once I run it through my trimmer, um, it's, it didn't cut all the way through, but that was okay. I just had to kind of really run the blade of my uh, scissors across it and it cut up nicely. And you'll see that here. I just kind of run it along really easily. I'm not really cutting it. I'm just kind of um, running the blade along and then it cuts up. So that works out perfect. Now I did trace that circle and I'm going to again run this through my Gemini Junior. And it worked out really well. It cuts super easily. And not to worry if that foam kind of squishes down. It will bounce back up. So not a problem there. And then again, I'm going to put that together on my card, make sure that my circle lines up properly. It took me a bit, but I finally got it. And then uh, again, just trimming it and making sure it's smaller than that A2 panel, just so it doesn't stick out. All right, so from there, again, I use my Be Creative tape and uh, on the back of that panel and adhere it down so that I have kind of like a little well. I'm just finding my um, card base at this point. I wanted to use an A2 side folding card and I'm in the middle of also making Christmas cards so I have everything everywhere all over my desk. So I finally found it and uh, then I can go ahead and adhere this down. And then I realized I don't like just the white on the back. So I'm going to trace a, that circle and then I'll color it in with one of my Copic markers. One of my, I think it was the BG10 is what I used. And then I can just have that look like it's um, water on the inside there instead of just being white. So I'll use the Be Creative tape on this foam piece, get it all adhered down. It's really, really important that when you're creating shaker cards or any cards that are interactive that you use strong adhesive. The last thing you want is to spend all this time putting the card together uh, only to have um, the card kind of start coming apart on you and, and that's no fun when that happens. So I'm running this uh, Be Creative tape kind of around this circle here. I don't want um, any of my little shaker elements to get um, like slip through the card in between the card panel. I want them to stay in that little circle area. So I'll use that um, strong adhesive around there as well. Again, just using my Tim Holtz craft pick just to pull up the liner paper, the backing of that adhesive. And I'm looking forward to actually making a lot of Christmas shaker cards as well. Like I said, I'm in the middle of um, getting everything ready for a craft fair that I have coming up and I have everything everywhere and between Christmas and babies and I had my son's birthday this weekend as well. So I was kind of all over the place in my card making and uh, so my, my desk is a hot mess. You're lucky you can't see the whole thing. <laughs> all right, so I did get that foam piece adhered down. Again, making sure I use that strong adhesive not only to adhere that 
uh, card piece panel onto the foam, but the foam again onto the actual card base itself. Uh, you can see that I've gone ahead and uh, colored that circle image in. And I'll just quickly pull this tape along, just tearing it with my fingers. All right, and now I can go ahead and uh, lift up that liner and I'm going to line up that uh, hole that we cut, that die cut circle hole with the um, circle that I colored. Bringing in my graphic again. Oh my goodness, that is a hot mess hairdo today. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I've been in such a time crunch lately. I feel like as soon as Halloween was over, it just things are just speeding up way too quickly for me. I cannot believe that we are um, actually almost into mid-November. This is this is crazy. Does anybody else feel like Christmas is coming way too fast? I have so much I need to do. All right, so once I have this liner lifted up here, a little bit of a struggle, but. I finally get it. I'm going to carefully line it up and I'm kind of going to cut this part out um, because my head really really kind of gets in the way and you don't need to see that. So I've put some of those little uh, die cut images, the images that I colored, the clothing items there into that little well um, because that foam um, piece that we use creates kind of like a little well and then I can add my sparklets and I've got my uh, Studio Katya little sequins as well. I'll list everything over on the Scrap and Stamp blog for you to look at. Um, and I'm just kind of dropping them into that little well. And this is the... Um, I wanted to add some of these little sparklets onto that shirt itself just so they kind of stay on there. I used... Um, what is that called? glossy accents to adhere that down, to adhere one of the sequins and the sparklets on top of that just so it kind of stays on there and they don't all fall to the bottom. Again, some of these little Studio Katia blue pieces, some iridescent sequins, just kind of whatever I had around. And I'm using a crystal katana to put those in. Um, I find this really works well. My jewel picker, I don't know, it's, it's losing its stick. I'm not sure what's going on with it, but this crystal katana works amazing. I have to highly recommend it. And then I wanted to have that one red sock in there. Um, anyone who's ever had a baby, um, you know, in the beginning we all have good intentions. We're, we're, you know, sorting out our clothes, our lights, our darks, our um, whites. And then somewhere along the line, we just, we kind of lose it and we just throw everything in the washing machine and sometimes that one uh, a red sock gets in with the whites and it mixes it all up. That's how tired we are when babies come along. So I'm using my reverse tweezers to line that up. I already have that, um, The why can't I remember the name of that? It's the transfer paper for the laminator, the laminator paper um, that already adhered to the back of that washing machine, just adding these elements. And I wanted to pop up the um, little dryer sheet box there. I'll use um, some foam squares to pop that up. Um, just using a liquid adhesive here, my uh, Tombow Mono liquid glue, multi-liquid glue here, and I went to squeeze it out and a big blob came out because that's what's happening lately is nothing's really working my way, but that's okay. I can use it, uh, it just blobbed it onto some scrap paper and I can make sure it doesn't go to waste. Adhering down that laundry basket and the scene is really starting to come together. I love how it's looking. So using those foam squares and then I can add this last little element on and look at this. How sweet is that? A little bundles on the way. Loads of fun. Oh my goodness. Shaking it. I love how that looks with the the uh, laminator paper with the um, embossing glitter in between there. It's just a really neat, neat, fun way to make a shaker card without, you know, the standard um, adhesive. Little bundles on the way, loads of fun. And then on the inside I added and laundry. I really hope my friend enjoys this card. I'm so excited for her to be a first-time mom and uh, join this special group 
that we are of moms. I did add a wink of Stella to the dials of the washing machine. That was the only thing I didn't show there, but look at that. Isn't this a fun card? I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Everything is linked over at the Scrap and Stamp blog, which is linked in the description below. Check out these other videos and have an awesome day, guys. Thank you.